at a yard sale. It's probably uh, around 11 o'clock and a little later in the day. And we got the free, free pile. And in the free pile is this Craftsman mower. That says, there's oil leak and the head gasket still runs. What do you say? We bring that home, see if we can fix it. Free score. Let's go get this thing out of the truck. See what we got. With one ramp. Should be able to just slide it down the middle though. Before we do anything, he says it runs. Let's see if we can go fire it up. Let's see what we get. Uh, I think that one's the one to make it run. I don't know if it has a choke. Automatic or not. Started easy. Let's uh, let's go bring it in the garage. So I guess if you leave it run long enough, it'll start uh, really pumping out some smoke. But let's go check the obvious things first. Because sometimes that could be what our issue is. Let's go get a, a rag. Go wipe that off. We'll check the oil level. Sometimes people overfill them, and that can definitely cause an issue. Uh, it's up about a little more than it should. Should be down. Actually, it's showing. That should be the high, but actually that is right there. So it is overfilled by yeah, about a three quarters of an inch. Let's we'll pop the air cleaner off. See, make sure the air cleaner. Uh, a good tell would be if the air cleaner gets soaked with oil because it will push it out the breather hose, hose and then generally it kind of fills up the air cleaner and then the oil gets pushed in through the intake and causes it sometimes. It's pretty dry, but I'm looking for where the breather hose even goes into the crankcase, it's back here. So it's down lower than what it should be. Let's, um, the filter is dry. Let's put it outside. We're going to leave it as it is. I'll put a clamp on it. We'll let it run. We'll see what it does over time. And uh, let's just reconfirm what its issues is. Issues are. Issues is. And the very first thing we'll try doing is we'll take the oil level down to where it should be and see if that makes it go away. But let's just um, duplicate what's happening make sure that we have a problem before we do anything <laughs> all right back outside it goes I wouldn't say it's smoking a ton. It's smoking a lot, but it's not, you know. <laughs> Let's go purge some of that oil out of there and see what we get, see if it uh, will cure itself. Now the problem is I'm gonna have to run it a while after I do that because the exhaust system and everything is kind of contaminated with oil. So even once I do knock the level down, I do suspect it to smoke for, you know, five, five minutes or so. So 
much of a mess we can make. We'll check that, see how it looks. See, we're just a hair above the high. Yeah, that's pretty good. It looks like it's almost right on the high high spot. So let's go uh, wipe off what I spilled on it, fire it back up, and let it run a little bit, see what the outcome is. So that's about 10 minutes later and it seems like it's pretty much good except for what like I said the muffler was going to be contaminated with and you can see what it shut off you can see it just burning off the excess oil that's on the muffler itself Let's see what we got underneath the blade looks decent might be bent down on that side we'll check that out in a little bit you can definitely tell it's been used for a while so I have a feeling either he checked the oil and it was on an angle and he overfilled it and just didn't catch it not sure i do know the muffler seems like it's backing off a little bit the hardware is loose on that yeah i learned my lesson i'm not going to touch that but you can see the the brackets flapping uh, i'm going to go bring it over to pressure washer we're going to go knock all this crap off of it and uh, let's go through it a little bit better it also in the back of the truck we have a, a bagger system for it too so we'll look into that part of it Let's see what we have. I'm letting that cool down before you hit it with the pressure washer. Side chute. Larger one. And I guess that would probably fit up between the handlebars. And I would think this part of it clips onto the handlebar frame. But I am more concerned looking for mouse holes, which are very popular in our neck of the woods ones that have been sitting i don't see any that's a good sign don't know if it's missing any hardware or anything we'll figure that out when we get it on but let's get the rest of it serviced first Blew most of that water off. It looks fairly decent. Some of the black paint kind of came off the engine, but that's to be expected. As far as uh, how much oil was overfilled by, that's how much it was overfilled by. Not a, a terrible amount, but it's enough to, to cause its issues. So I think for us to move forward, I'm going to flip it back over on its side. We're going to get the rest of the oil out of it. We're going to, uh, while that's going on, we're going to look into the blade situation, pull the plug on it. It seems to run fine. We may or may not pull the float ball down on it. 
it's not always the carburetor. <laughs> I'll definitely blow the air cleaner out and we'll give it just a once over and see what we have. So let's get it on the side, get the rest of the oil out of it and look into that blade. ask me why don't you take the drain plug out of the bottom of it a lot of times the drain plug can be seized into the body or you have to remove a bunch of plastic to have access to it and you can get just as much out of it by flipping it on its side as you can uh, trying to get the plug out of it and see what we have underneath here so if you notice on this one that uh, I do not see the drain plug it's probably underneath here Mission and then your bolt too. In any event, yeah, we would have to remove all that. And nothing says that we need to. Let's, uh, it's not going to start, but let's yank that plug wire off of there. And we are going to eyeball right there where that blade is going. And we're going to bring over the other side. Actually, it looks pretty close. Let's throw a clamp on it. Let's grab a clamp. And we're going to use that for measuring. So we're going to go call that one right at the edge of that. Yeah, it's within. It's within an eighth of an inch. I actually think I'm going to leave that alone. It looked like the end of the one of the blade was kind of bent down to me. Looking at that, it's got a slight taper down. And that one looks like it has more. Like I said, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave that alone. The edge actually feels quite good. The end is actually quite fine. When I, I'm not even gonna bother. Guy must have no rocks in his yard. Not like here. Yeah, that edge is actually. That's fine. Usually it's blunted on the very face of it. So, you may have taken care of his machines, but he took a little good, too good care of his machines and had a little too much oil. So, let's pop that air cleaner off. We're going to blow that filament out. The bowl, yeah, we might as well take the bowl over while it's on the angle that it is. Yeah, let's just see if we can pop the bowl off. You always want to flip up. The deck so that the air cleaner faces up or else oil can uh, go through the breather and soak your air filter and take it out of the game well, for one like if you're sharpening the blade or doing what you're doing so we're going to just go pull that float ball out and see if it has any crap that's in there while we're here the jet doesn't look terribly dirty hopefully the o-ring doesn't go out of whack and it has It's very clean, actually. Actually, it is the uh, Welch plug fell out of it. You guys see that plug in the bottom of it? That is supposed to be pushed up into the top of the carburetor. That's floating around the bowl. Not sure if we're going to be able to get that back in there while it's on the machine. Let's see if we can get that. A, get ourselves some room. Steal the vice grips. Pull the pin on the float. Yeah, it all looks very clean. As I almost lose the pin. And that gap, it's hard to see, it's gonna be up in that corner there. So I'm gonna do my best to try to push that back into place. Here's a closer look at that. You see how it's got a little bit of a curve to it. I'm trying to remember which way it goes. I believe you go the bell faces kind of down or the spoon part of it faces down. And what you do is you want to put a dent in the center of it and it kind of expands it a little bit and holds it into place. I believe it's that direction. I'm not positive of that though. And looking at this one. 
I believe that's the case. That's how we're gonna put it back in anyway. I know the fuel line's in front of you, it's hard to see, but it's up in there and we're gonna try to get a tap on it. Hit it with a tap, I'm not trying to put a tap on it. And try to hit it with a punch, put a little bit of a dent in it. I think I got it. It's kind of hitting it on an angle. One more, one more shot. There you go. And hopefully, that should stay in. And even without it, it'll run. It's meant to stop it's a the vent it goes to a vent for the carburetor but the idea is to allow so fuel doesn't splash you back up and out of the hole for i guess if you're four wheeling your mower so we are going to go see if i got another seal for that bowl i'm going to go clean up some of the white crap that's just sitting on the end of the bowl right here and uh clean the pieces up put the bowl back on let's see if we get that float back on there It's nice as the float kind of grabs the the needle grabs onto the float so you don't have to try to wrestle with the whole thing and right, we just get that bolt back on there with the nut and that should be good and I clean that jet off too so let's get rid of that let's see Unfortunately, I did not have a new seal. You would think I would, because uh, someone sent me 30 of, last time I went through this, sent me 30 of them, and I ordered 30 of them, so I have 60 of them. <laughs> Something like that. But there's two sizes. Guess what? I don't have that size either. So we just cleaned off the old one. that over and the bowl nut is the the main jet also so I blew the main jet out made sure that was clear but it was running before so it wasn't like you're expecting a ton of crap in it should be good for that uh, what do you want to do now Probably pop the plug out of it. I'm sure this got some somewhat oil fouled. We'll clean that up. And it's back on its flat. Remember, you still don't have oil on it yet. Let's see what this guy looks like. I suspect it to be somewhat black. It can't be too bad because it was running. Yeah, not terrible. We're just gonna go clean that up real quick and put that back in. Don't see much of uh, any buildup down on the inside of it. Let's go pop that air cleaner element back out of there. We'll blow that off. And uh, reuse that. Let's get some of the crap out of the way. I'm going to turn you towards the door so I'm not blowing it at the carburetor. Usually they have a sock that you can remove. And normally I do this outside, but for video purposes. That, was, that one's still in nice shape. And wherever I put the sock down, we're going to go blow that out. Where'd it go? It was hiding. That's what we're doing. Do that just because it's fun. So that's all cleaned out. I think we will fill it back up with oil. We'll bring it back outside we'll fire it up make sure everything's okay maybe we'll jump onto the bagger setup
we are right about at the the top dot again. That should be good. Uh, sometimes what happens is you when you're putting oil in the sides of the uh, the dipstick uh, enclosure has is wet with oil. So you, when you put the stick in, you kind of get a false reading. So we'll run when we run it. Last thing we'll do is double check it one more time. One other thing we got to do is uh, these are a little loose. We're gonna put a wrench on those, see if they'll turn in. If they don't, I'm just gonna leave them alone. But we'll give them a shot. It's got a little locking cap. Sometimes when you see exhaust bolts loosened up, it can be an indication that it got overheated at some point. Not necessarily, but I see it popular on snowblowers. And you say, a snowblower? Are you kidding? You use it in the wintertime. They get uh, mouse nests in them, and they're not cooling, so they really get baked. I'm not gonna push my luck. We'll call it right there. Bend those tabs back down again. We'll leave it at that. Let's go fire it back up. It may fight us a little bit because we had it on its side, but we'll see. Okay, we'll get into the uh, bagger. All right, let's go get into that bagging system. All right, so what this is called is a block off plate or a mulching plate, and what it does. We need a pair of pliers. Yeah, what that does is it uh, makes the grass go round and round. And cuts it up in really fine little pieces. Strip it out. And just redeposits it back in the lawn if you don't want to bag it. stays on actually sometimes they're removable can I do this with you here yeah let's go see if we can wiggle this guy back under it and this is what the bag is going to attach to I know you guys are not in the best of position to see but we're gonna go put that back on there and I'm gonna go dribble a little bit of oil back down on this nut before I put it back on Be down there. Not the next time. We're not fighting it as much. It does have electric start. That's electric starter right there. I do not see a battery. Um, he said he bought it new and it didn't have one. You know whether that's the full story or not. I'm not sure. But if we care to, we could chase with the battery. Now it has another chute too. This can go off if you want to have it for a side discharge. It just goes on the same way, but it kicks the grass to the side. All right, let's see if we can get that bag set up on there and wrestle with that. Get you uh, looking up a little bit. You and I will figure out how this goes on together. Drop it down from the top. It's like it slips down over the top. It goes like that. something that latches it together or not. I do see it sitting a little bit apart on the bottom. That 
looks like it's on the outside. Maybe it should be on the inside. That's how it goes. Yeah. See if we could just clips together. We'll fire it up, see how that looks. And uh, maybe we'll shoot some, hit it with some bleach to see if it'll go back to more of a white color. See how well that puffs up for us. Go uh, spray it down with a little bit of bleach and see if that'll get whitened up. Yeah, it's just a bleach and water mix. I'm just going to spray that all down, let it set for a little bit, and bring it back over to pressure washer on the machine because it helps kind of hold it fluffed out instead of trying to chase it around the ground with the uh, pressure washer. It may or may not come back. That's fine. Just trying to dress it up a little bit. That's it guys, I'm happy with that. It's uh, a little bit more to do. I'm gonna go put some lube on the wheels and uh, check those pivots, make sure they're okay. I already adjusted the, uh, the deck height on it. All that stuff does move free. But uh, I think we're in it for about a dollar's worth of oil and that's about it. That's a good deal. About an hour's worth of work. With that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Nice quick little video on a uh, little Saturday afternoon project from the free pile. So till the next one, I will see you guys later. And just for uh, the other extra stuff that came out from the yard sales, I got out late, so it wasn't much to be picked at. But uh, it was a GPS. I get I get lost real easy. So <laughs> I have two of them on the dash. Uh, one of them is exactly, this is the one I, I normally use, and that's just an exact copy of it. That was five bucks at the yard sale. So I'll throw that in a bit different vehicle and uh, not have to worry about trying to transfer the one I have all the time. And then all is equal to
I believe they're the good guys, so give them a good wave when they fly by. <laughs> 